Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we're going to talk about the sin graph. Now trigonometry is something new for grade 10 so I know it's a little bit weird these new sin cos and tan graphs but I'm going to do my best to familiarize you with it and to just show you that it's not that bad. Okay so a typical sin graph is going to look like this. So we're going to draw a sin graph together, so we need an x and a y axis first. Now, on a normal graph, we usually have an x and a y axis, and that's the same for the sin graph. But on a normal graph, your x value is normally like 1 and 2 and 3, and your y values are like 1 and 2. On a sin, cos, and tan graph, your x axis is going to be measured in degrees okay so you're gonna see things like 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees 360 of course it could go backwards like minus 90 minus 180 minus 270 sorry that was a bit messy minus 360 your y-axis is gonna usually go up in single numbers like 1 and 2 and minus 1 and minus 2 Okay, so we need to call on the calculator to help us work out where to put all the different dots. So I'm going to get a calculator quickly. Now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start off at zero degrees. Okay, so what I'm going to say is sin, and then I'm going to put a zero over there to say that it's the sin of zero degrees. So zero degrees is where the x-axis and the y-axis meet, and then I'm going to say equals, and that's going to give me a value of zero. So what I'm going to do then is place a value at 0 and 0. So that's going to be over there. Then I'm going to go to the sin of 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to say sin of 90 degrees. And that's going to give me a value of 1. So when sin is 90 degrees, then the y value is 1. Now I'm going to go to 180 degrees next. So if I say sin of 180 that gives me zero again. Okay, so I can go put my little value over there. And then I'm gonna go to 270 degrees and 360. And if you put 270 degrees in the calculator, you should get a y value of minus one over there. And then if you put a x value of 360, then you're gonna get a y value of zero. So now we can connect that. And so it will look something like that. You just don't wanna make it a straight line. You don't wanna do something like that. You want to try and make it as curvy as possible. Alright, and then if we want to complete the left hand side, then you would have to just type in the sin of minus 90. That would just give you a value of minus 1. Sin of minus 180 is 0. Sin of minus 270 is 1. And then the sin of minus 360 is 0. So it just, conf it just forms a continuous wave like that over there. Okay, so notice how mine has a few untidy parts. It really doesn't matter, guys. That's not really what teachers are looking for. You just want to make sure you can get it as neat as possible. Okay, so that is a sin graph. Get very used to it. The main things to realize is that a sin graph at 90 degrees, it has a y value of 1. At 180 degrees, it has a y value of 0. At 270 degrees, it has a y value of minus 1. And at 360 degrees, it has a y value of 0. Now, I could carry on with this graph. I could have made this graph carry on, and a sin graph will just keep going. And it could also go backwards. So this sin graph can go on for as long as you would like, okay? So depending on the question and depending on the teacher, they could make you draw quite a long sin graph but most of the time it's just going to be in this area over here between minus 360 and 360 degrees so now that you understand what a basic sin graph looks like oh and by the way sometimes if we change the equation of a sin graph this sin graph is the basic y equals to sin x if i put a 2 in the front for example or i put a plus 2 at the end it can it will change the shape so your sin graph might start doing stuff like that but the basic shape is always going to look like a wave. But we'll get to that in later videos. But what I want to do now is speak to you about some important concepts such as the period, the domain, the range, and the amplitude. The period is how long does it take for the graph to repeat? So we can see that this sin graph starts over here 
and it takes it repeats one full cycle up to that point over there and so it takes 360 degrees to repeat for grade 10 you must just memorize that only in grade 11 do they start changing that and they start squashing the graph up like that but for grade 10 the period is the distance that it takes to repeat one cycle that will always be 360 degrees, so just memorize that. The word domain is something that you would have encountered when you did other types of graphs, such as parabolas, exponentials, hyperbolas. It's simply explaining the x values. So this graph that we can see in front of us goes from minus 360 up to 360. So you could say that the domain is an element, so you say x is an element, going from minus 360 up to 360. The square brackets tell me that the graph touches minus 360 and 360. I know some people prefer this method over here which is absolutely fine as well but then for that method you must just add XER at the end. So the period of a sin graph is always 360 but the domain can change depending on the question. So in this question it's going to be between minus 360 and 360. Range is the same as domain, but it's just the y values. So we'll say y is an element. Now the lowest y value is minus 1, and the highest y value is 1. Because remember, the y values go in this direction. So it will be y as an element going from minus 1 up to 1. Now your amplitude is always going to be this number over here that's in the front of the equation. So in this case, it's a 1. But let me explain what amplitude really means. A sin graph has a resting position. Now the resting position is the place where it's not going up or going down like that. It's the point in the very middle. So it's this part over here. So it's like the halfway position. Now if you have the halfway position then the amplitude is the distance from the halfway position to the highest point. Now if the halfway position has a y value of 0 and the highest point is 1 then your amplitude is one. And so those are four main terms that you need to get used to and in the lessons after this we're going to become more used to the sin graph, cos graph and the tan graph.